Hey guys, Christian over at NFIG Car Stereo. Today we're in a 2007 Audi A4. Um, same radio as a 07 A4, 08 A4, uh, 09 A4 convertible because the, the rest of the A4s went up to the uh, B8 body style, but the convertible stated to be 7. Um, also in Europe, uh, it's called the Concert Gen 2 Plus. I think it just says Audi Concert on the front. But anyway, we're going to replace this radio with a Pioneer AVH uh, 2300 NEX with built-in CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, our harnesses uh, allow to you to keep your factory amplifier. I know uh, you know a lot of people have issues with that. And the steering controls will, a uh, factory steering controls will also control the aftermarket radio. And our harnesses have no problems uh, with the rolling steering controls programming or anything like that. All right, guys, first thing you got to do to uh, replace the radio is obviously take out the old factory one. So uh, let me here's a clip from our radio removal video. Uh, first thing you got to do is make sure you have no CDs. So turn on the radio, hit eject, no CD, you're good. What happens is if you jam, if you have CDs in there, if you move it abruptly or turn it upside down, they'll jam and it'll just break the mechanism. So these are the NFIG RRK4 radio removal keys. They come in a sets of four. Uh, they also come in sets of two, so make sure you order four, okay? So what we do is that the notch always faces towards the center, and we always give the keys a bend towards uh, the center, too. So which means is that top right, uh, the notch is on the left, and we're bending them down. You'll hear a click. All right, the top left is the opposite, where the notch is towards the right, but it still bends down, okay? Now, the bottom left notch towards the right and bend up and bottom right notch towards the center and also bend up all right so what you can do right here is you're going to pull this out a little bit now it doesn't always come out like that far usually you have to pull a little bit pull a little bit if you look at these keys they have a little bit of flex so you want to flex outward as you pull we got lucky on that one and it just came right out so you pull it out now you have to push in to remove them let me i'll show you how that works in a second so first thing you're going to do um grab something this is a tool toolbox liner we like using this because um it's rugged or you know at home use a sweatshirt or a towel or something now when you pull this out be very careful with the antenna when you pull it out gently grab the antenna and make sure that these cables don't get flexed out because if they do, this will break off, okay? So now we're gonna put this here to guard. Now, if you look over here, um, you'll see this has a little push button there. So what happens is that when you insert the key, that actually retracts, see? And locks the mechanism. So to get the, the key out, you just have to push that in and pull that out, okay? Now, like I said, be very careful. Um, Make sure what, when you put this, you, you cover the bottom, because if not, you're gonna scratch up the whole top of this. Okay. All right, guys, so now here's the back of the radio. Both of these antennas are your AM, FM antennas. So what we're gonna have to do is, you, when you push on here, there's a locking tab, you push, and then you wiggle it out. Okay, so as you see, there's a locking tab right there. Okay. And then over here, this is the big quad lock connector. They call it a quad lock because it's four connectors in one. It has the two little connectors on the bottom, and then this one is semi-removable, and then the other one. So to remove that, all you have to do is pinch in here, pull up, and it comes right out. That's it. That's how you take the uh, radio out of uh, Audi A4. All right, guys. Now that we got the radio out, let's talk about some of the products we're not going to use in this video. Um, so this car came with the... 6 CD radio, if it had come with a navigation radio and we were installing a navigation radio, uh, we would install this. Uh, this is the GAA-3 Blue, I believe is the part number. Um, so what it is, is, is this would plug into the factory GPS antenna and this converter plugs into a Pioneer GPS. So we have them for all different radios. So if you're watching this video and you're installing a navigation radio, uh, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, 2000 six and up check the website for the exact years but all 2007 and 2008 a4s um sedan and wagon not convertible um in the back there is a factory gps antenna 
um, cause the antenna on the roof of the car has GPS built in. So, um, you can actually run this with an extension to the back in this car, even though it did not come with a GPS antenna and all 0708 and 09 a four convertibles. Well, 07, all, all of the 07 and 08s and then all of the 09 convertibles have a satellite tuner in the back antenna. So you can run this antenna. This is the NFIG SAA SIR 600. Um, so what this does, this plugs into the antenna in the back, you run up front, and this plugs into the new GPS. So just wanted to get that out of the way since, uh, you know, I, we're not gonna use these on these. I wanna make sure you guys knew because a lot of you guys will never make it to the end of the video. All right, guys, it's time to show you the parts we're gonna use to replace the factory radio with the Pioneer. So first thing we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about the antenna adapter. This is the NFIG AAA VW AUD5. So what this does is it does two things. So first thing you're gonna do, it's gonna convert the connector into a uh, the correct one. Now, if you have problems, sometimes you have to push this little pink thing in for it to squeeze all the way in, okay? And then, you know, just put the little connector down, make sure it doesn't fall out because sometimes you might uh, be on the lip on the connector and then throughout years, it might just fall out. Um, so on the other end, this will plug into the new aftermarket radio with the correct connection. It's called the uh, Motorola style connector. Now, this little wire is very important. Uh, so a lot of shops don't use the correct antenna adapter. They either use the single with no wire or they use the dual with no wire. And in this car, um, you know what, let me get it real quick. All right, guys. So this radio didn't come in with the factory radio. Uh, the radio you saw us take out uh, was actually one we have on the bench. We keep a lot of these Audi radios in stock uh, just to test stuff. But anyway, this is the antenna adapter that came out. So this antenna adapter was only using half the antenna system in the back, number one. Number two, it didn't have a turn-on wire. What this turn-on wire does is um, it sends 12 volts down the center pin and turns on the booster. So without this, you, your boosters are turned off. That's like driving your car with no gas. It just doesn't make any sense. So um, you, you need the dual antenna and you need the booster. This is why ours has the both connections and this is why you know you have to put the right stuff in. If you don't put the right stuff in your car, you're not gonna get any reception. All right guys, so this blue wire, I'm gonna show you what to do with in one second. So next part we're gonna do is this is the NFIG SRWH AUD3 uh, high low all right, so SRWH, SRWH means smart radio wiring harness. That usually means it has an electronic box. It does something, that's how we differentiate our harnesses. For Because for this, har so if you bought a radio and they give you a free harness, what they're gonna give you, they're gonna give you the harness that's free and it fits and everything works, but the problem is that you have to run wires to the fuse box and you have to find like four or five wires in the car to get the radio to work. Well, at least two, depending on which radio, sometimes more. So ours has everything built in. So let's show, first we're gonna do is gonna grab the factory harness and we're gonna plug this in. Now, first thing I'm gonna tell you right now is that we do not use all the factory pins, so please don't call me and tell me I have the wrong harness because not all the wires are there because you don't need all the wires, but it helps if you put it in the right way. As you can see, okay. So now, this end over here is, our harnesses are all made to go into a Blaupunkt radio, okay? So Blaupunkt back in the day was the biggest German radio. Sorry guys, current Blaupunkt radios are just Chinese radios with a blob punk sticker on them. Blob punk only does uh, buses now. So if you see, if you are an old school guy, don't buy blob punk anymore. I mean, I mean, buy it if you don't care about getting a Chinese radio, but that's a different story. So um, you can either, I don't recommend you cut this off. We, if you, if you don't have a plug and play for your car, uh, send us an email. Uh, we may have one. It's just not on the site. Or if you don't want to pay for it, at least buy the cheap uh, universal plug and play. Because once you start splicing these, you'll see. Some of these have two wires in them, and it just, it, every time I have a headache with an install, it's always because you cut this off. So try to get the th minimum, the $3 one, if not the converter that we have. I'll get to those in a second. Um, so this box right here, um, this is the steering control box. Um, so what you do is that you plug in uh, SR, so this is a PMP Pio, all right? We have different ones for radios. So what this does is that this gives you the correct end for your radio, and then these little jumpers you see right here, they tell the box, hey, we're going into a Pioneer, so you don't have to program. You have to sit there and map your buttons out and all that crazy stuff. Um, so you just plug this in, okay? Now you unplug this, wait five seconds, and then plug it back in. When you plug this back in, every time the box gets power, it reads these jumpers and it knows we're doing Pioneer, so that's it. That's how you program the unit. No, it's not none of that complicated. Push the button, wait for the light to blink. It's I hate doing those. All right, so... 
what goes into the box? You got yellowish constant power and you got red, which is ground. These twisted pair are the orange twisted pair behind your radio. There's a CAN bus, CAN high, CAN low. Uh, this brown wire is a mute wire. Um, in this car, isn't used. We use this harness for a couple different cars. Uh, in, in the A4s, it's not used. Now, the rest of these wires are sent to the factory radio using the CAN bus computer signal. Um, it's not a regular um, analog signal through electricity. It's, 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 it's data. So, the reverse wire. Very important. This wire, if you're doing a backup camera, it tells the radio that you are in reverse. Um, so the radio can switch on the screen. Very important. Do not, do not hook up your backup camera power to that because what will happen, it won't blow right away, but eventually you'll burn out the reverse signal because it's not meant to power a camera. It's only meant to tell the radio. Okay. Now, this is the parking brake, the mint green one. Parking brake means when you pull up the e-brake, it actually gives you a ground signal. So that way you can um, unlock the security features. Like you can't, you know, DVD while driving, uh, you know, it's illegal. So you don't want that. They can actually tow your car for that. So if you, if you it's, it's extreme and it'll probably never happen, but it, they can. So that's what the parking brake wire is. This is the pink VSS wire. Um, this is a vehicle speed sense. So if you have a Pioneer GPS radio, I think those are the only ones that still use it. Uh, it'll tell you the, how fast you're going. So if you go under a tunnel, um, if you ever had GPS and you go into a tunnel, your car's completely lost. So Pioneers actually have a VSS wire, which is vehicle speed sense, that keeps you on the road you're on. So that way when you pop out on the other side, it doesn't have to recalibrate. It's kind of already knows where it's at just by how fast you're going. All right. These are all, if you're, if you're not doing a touchscreen radio, they don't matter. Um, these radios, these two wires are very important. So if you get a basic harness that's cheap, it won't have these because these are on the data bus. So this orange wire is the dimmer wire. So what that does is that when you turn on your headlights at night, it knows your headlights are on and it'll dim the radio. So that way you don't have this bright light while you're driving in your face. All right. But this is the most important one. This is the ignition wire. So what this does is that when you turn on the key, um, this will send 12 volts to the radio to tell it to turn on. I think that's a little important, no? So if you don't have this wire and you hook it up to the yellow, when you turn off the radio, it's still drawing power. So uh, it will kill your battery. Um, this also has key sense, which means that in Audis, when you turn off the key, the radio stays on. So the rest of the car isn't on. Um, so R stays on until you pull out the key, just like the factory. Because if you don't use this and you run it to a fuse box, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be only on when the key is on. So when the key is on, you're gonna have the rest of the car is on, so you, there's a lot more current draw than just the, uh, the, the battery, okay? So those are the wires. The, this, the, you know, we already talked about the green, the pink, and the uh, purple and white. Now, over here, this is very important. This is so important that we label it, because this was the most common problem we had when people called up that hey on Bose cars the entire car is amplified on non Bose only the rear speakers in the sub if you have a convertible most of the car is uh, is amplified except for the tweeters I believe which is embarrassing because I actually own a b6 a4 so I should know that um, but I still has a factory system in it, so anyway uh, so this wire you hook up to the amplifier turn on wire coming out of the uh, the radio and this turns on the factory amplifier okay now, we're still not here. Now we're going to the Hilo box. The Hilo box is what we call our magic box. Um, so what happens in this car is that the factory, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the factory radio puts out, we're gonna guess an average of between, you know, probably about six, between five and seven, six volts out. So in a car, most radios have four volts. Out. Well, no, most radios have two volts. So if you have a two volt, two volt radio and you don't get this, it's going to sound horrible. Um, it's going to be flat. And if you don't have Bose, your rear speakers and your um, your rear speakers and your subwoofer are going to be half the volume. Okay, more than half of the front. Um, if you have a four volt radio, uh, then it's not going to be as bad, but you still are losing, uh, you know, some of the sound. So I. Definitely recommend it. If you have five volts, honestly, if you, there's a couple five volt radios out there, it's kind of I don't I don't know yet. Uh, check the website. I, we ordered a five volt radio to see what the difference is, so we can check it. You know that's why we keep an A4 in house. So 
we do testing. Now, the adjustments on these knobs. Um, what I recommend to you is that you, um, mat if you don't have bows, match the, the rear to the front. Some people actually bump up the rear a little bit, so that way it, it, it gives you a little more bass. And if you don't have bows, the front shoes don't do anything unless you're in a convertible because the fronts are amplified also. Um, and if you do have bows, my really recommendation is to, to leave them kind of where they're at. So you're going to be at between either uh, one third and a half. Somewhere in between there is a sweet spot because different radials have different voltages. Um, so, but you know, you have to play it out by ear. Um, I think that's about it for the high-low box. All right, guys, pay attention. This is an NFIG exclusive. Um, so Audi, your Audi has a center channel, okay? If you have bows, don't worry about it because it runs off the amp and it gets handled with the amp. If you don't have bows, the way Audi did the center channel in the front, so and like I said before, the non-Bose cars, is not, um, it's not amplified in the front, except for convertible again. Um, so if you look over here, this is where the rear speakers should go that are empty because they're handled by the amplifier. And these four are the front speakers. So the front speakers is two wires each. What Audi does for the center channel is that it grabs the negative from front left and the positive from front right, and it goes across. Now, the amplifier and the radio is designed for that, and it can handle that. What happens only in Pioneer, for some reason the Pioneer amp can't handle it. I've never heard this complaint on, a, on any other radio. Um, and Pioneer is my favorite brand. I still think you should buy Pioneers. Um, they're just, they're best as far as easy to use. There's radios with more features that you'll never use, but let me not get sidetracked. So if you look over here, you'll see that there's a, th a thick brown and green and a thin brown. And back here, which you can't see, I'm not, you know, is the thick green and blue and the thin one. So this little thin wire is your center channel speaker. So if you're a true purist and you're, and you're like and you're OCD, which I'm super OCD and I know the factory radio is never coming back in, um, you can actually disconnect at the top. But this is the easiest way of doing it. All you got to do, cut one of the one of the thin ones because if you cut one side, then the speaker doesn't work. You don't have to cut them both, and then just tape both sides off and then continue with the install. That's all you got to do. Um, that's very important because what'll happen is that. A lot of times the Pioneer amplifier, when you go past a certain volume, it'll start clipping. What clipping means is that the sound cuts in and out. The reason that happens is because you're adding this third speaker across uh, to the two front speakers and the Pioneer amplifier isn't designed to handle that. So that's what causes clipping. But if you cut this and tape it off, it will handle uh, the clipping and it, it will disconnect the center channel speaker and you won't have any clipping. So that's something that almost nobody knows. You're welcome. All right, guys. So now we're back to the Blah Punk connector. Like I said, these harness were made for Blah Punk radios when the Blah Punks were, were the, the king. So if you had a German car, that's pretty much all you would put a Blah Punk radio in. So what we did is that um, instead of making one for every single vehicle, because that would just be an inventory nightmare, uh, what we did was we made converters to convert from Blah Punk to other things. This is a PMP Pio 0237. Um, this pretty much covers all current pioneer touchscreen radios that do not have built-in navigation um so the nex models it covers all of them as long as they're not the avic ones um so what we're going to do here is plug these two in so right now you have your uh, all your speaker connections okay so remember that little blue wire for the uh antenna i was talking about all right see a little spot right there next to the orange and next to the red all right so what we're going to do there is if you look at this thing you see it has a little locking tab sticking out right there that locking tab should point towards the red wire and you're going to hear click heard that so now it's clicked in here now it, it you can take it out if you just a little tip you can put a uh paper clip in there and push in the locking tab and take it out if you ever need to um because for some reason i get people sometimes that put it in the wrong hole um so on this side, so this matches all the speakers, and on this side, you'll see that it matches all the other ones. So this is a perfect converter, converts it over. Now, on this converter, we have loose wires, okay? So first of all, is a very, very important amplifier turn-on wire. So what this does, on a Pioneer radio, it only has one wire. Some radios have two wires. So uh, on a radio that has two wires, it has an amplifier turn-on and an antenna turn-on. 
The difference is the amplifier turn on is on when the radio is on, and antenna turn on is on when the um, only AM FM is on. So Rick, so since this car only has an amplifier turn on, what we did is that we use this coming in here to feed the antenna. See, so we feed the antenna, and then we wide it off and we change it to a blue and white because that to do the amplifier turn on. So what you gotta do is you push these in here. Okay. Now, if you have issues where your amplifiers are not turning on or your um, speakers are, or, or something like that. Um, so if your amplified speakers aren't turned on, first thing you do is measure with the radio on to make sure you're getting 12 volts here. If you're not getting 12 volts, um, that's just that's the first question we're gonna ask you. So if you already know that when you call us for tech support, which by the way, if you uh, buy from us, you get lifetime tech support for the, as long as you own your car. Most of these companies nowadays, they just don't even offer tech support, okay? Um, so that's the amplifier turn on wire. Now onto the other loose wires. Um, we have a the parking brake wire. So what that does, that plugs into the, the mint green to mint green and that connects your um, your parking brake wire. So when you pull up the e-brake, it can disable all the security functions of the radio. And like I said, this is the purple and white wire. Um, that is a reverse sense. So when you put the car in reverse, this will send 12 volts to tell the radio universe to switch to the backup camera screen. Um, oh, for this car, we have a couple backup cameras we're testing right now. Um, you know, we don't like sending anything to the market unless we believe in it. So we're testing it. Check the website. Um, you know, if it says we have backup cameras, then it is. Uh, please don't email us and ask us if we have them. Or you know what I mean? Because once we have them ready, we'll add them to the website. Um, we just, you know, some, sometimes we'll be looking for cameras and we won't find anything. We just won't have one. So, um, so the next wire, this is what I call the April fool's wire. So this is a vehicle speed sense. Okay. This radio does not have vehicle speed sense. So we don't have vehicle speed sense. This is a mute wire. Okay. Mute wire. When you put ground on it, um, it mutes the radio. How does this vehicle speed sense work. It's an AC current, which means it's uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Guess what happens when you hook up these two together? Anyone? Anyone? When you hook up these two wires together, as soon as you move the car, positive and negative goes so fast that this wire sees a negative and mutes your radio. So when I get a phone call that someone says, hey, my radio's fine, but as soon as I start moving, it shuts off, no audio. I know this is what they did. So do not, that's why I call it the April Fool's wire because that is the perfect joke. It's like, so when I was, when I first started off in the shop, not this shop, before I owned my own shop, there was a guy, uh, our boss, and I'm not gonna say his name just in case, you know, who knows who's following. Um, we hooked up a, a horn flasher, to a flasher. So what that is, is, is it flashes the lights. We hooked it up to his horn but it only worked when the headlights were on so what does that mean when he left work it was still daylight by the time he got home it by the time he got home he turned on his lights as soon as he turned on his lights his honk would his horn would honk 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 so that's why i call it april fools because it's like a practical joke um yeah it's a perfect joke um anyway so back to the install that's the wiring this plugs into the radio um, this is a steering wheel control, uh, that plugs into the back where it says WR. Make sure it says WR, number one. Number two, if your steering controls are not working correctly, I guarantee you it's going to be two problems. It's either going to be, uh, you didn't program it right, so unplug this side and replug it. And also, if the steering wheel control is not pushed all the way in and it's hanging out a hair, it's going to give you issues. It's going to, it's, they'll work but they're not gonna do the right functions. I just happened to me last night in a Ford F-250. And since I've been doing this so long, I knew what to do, boom, popped it in, and everything worked fine. All right, so that, you got the antenna. Um, oh, and the microphone. So we're not gonna show you how to run the microphone because we have a microphone uh, installation video that we've already done. Um, it's not the best quality. It's not gonna be a good, as good as this quality, but I'm not gonna film uh, an entire video when the other one gives you, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the quality isn't as good as this video. All right. So now that we have all that covered, uh, I'm going to disconnect all this and then I'm going to go get the dash kit and then uh, we'll be right back.
All right, guys. So uh, to install the our dash kit, um, so our dash kit's better than the other dash kits because um, our dash kit the radio is removable. The the rest of the dash is what they do is they click into here and then they lock in. So the only way to pull them out is to wrestle them out, number one. Or you can stretch out your dashboard and then it's going to scratch everything on the way out. So um, our dash kit, the first thing you're going to do is remove these screws. These screws are what hold in our dash kit. The problem is if you look at that screw, it has a nice little washer on it. Um, so the screw doesn't fit back onto our kit. So eight millimeter. Counterclockwise. Forget lefty loosey righty tidy. All right. So, if, let's get the dash kit first. All right. So in this car, oops, upside down. We, so some of the B6s, this actually also helps. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna put that in there. Now, if your this doesn't lock in anything, um. To be honest with you, I never, ever, ever cut these when I do an install. Um, the only reason I recommend you guys cut them is because it makes it a little rougher for the radio to come out. Because if you look, when you put it in, um, it puts a little bit of outward pressure. So when it, when it comes to taking out the radio, it becomes a little bit harder. Like I said, I never cut them. Um, I just go in, go out, and I have no issues. But, you know, at home, if, if you don't put the screws in enough or something, you may have issues. So uh, just grab these and cut them. Uh, let me get something to cut them, and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a tin snip. Um, I do have other tools, but I want to use a tin snip because I know most people have tin snips. Um, so I'm just gonna grab the tin snip as close as I can. Make sure you don't. Oops. What I was gonna say is make sure your fingers, because when it closes, your fingers are gonna snap together. Uh, I only know that because I did that a million times before I learned my lesson. There it goes. Went on the dashboard. So now you got rid of that. So now when you put that in, it's not going to cause um, that little bump. Like I said, it's not, I don't ever cut it. I never ever cut it, but I feel it, it might make it easier for you guys. All right, guys. So now um, here are the screws we supplied. Um, now here's something. All right. You see how it's snug? So what you're going to do is you're going to, See how it moves? You're gonna tighten it till it's snug. Do not use a drill gun. I have very good control over this because I use this every day. Um, about once every two months, I get a phone call from someone saying, hey, your, your kit is junk. I just went to install it and it just broke in my hands. I'm like, sorry, sir, where did it break? He says, oh, you know, the screw thing, it just fell apart in my hands and I'm like, what happens is that if you go in with a screw gun and you over tighten it, it's going to crack the plastic. Which, listen, we get it. You made a mistake. We'll sell you the part for cheap, you know, just to get you a replacement. You know, we're not going to make money off you on the replacement. But, um, you know, just use a hand tool. All right, so next part of our kit. See how our kit holds in like this? So you don't have to grip on the side. So, like, if you order from some of these companies, they'll, they'll give you a free kit. But their free kit is that, you know... $10 kit that just pops right in and then when you put the radio in how are you gonna get it out? Ours comes with a nice metal cage Metal cage goes into here To be quite honest, you don't even have to um, You don't even have to uh, Once you put the radio in here it pretty much holds but you still have to bend a couple of tabs Sorry forgot the uh, I'll get my editor to do a uh, Benny Hill time all right, so on this, you're going to grab the closest ones to it. So on this radio, and caution, when you bend in, make sure you don't pop this out. Because when you pop this out, it's going to keep the radio from going in. So I know in this car, so right there, this is pretty well held in. Oh, that didn't work. See, what happened is, usually I put my fat head in the way. problem is that some B6, B7s, B5s usually have different stuff. So, that didn't work. This one we held tight. So now we're going to grab the closest ones here. See, that held on tight. And that held on tight. So, 
if you have run into problems, you can always buy a cage from us separately. Um, what happens a lot of times if you, once this cage is in, you really, once you take it out, you can't really reuse it. Um, it gets warped and everything. So if you see right here, see how that's snug enough. Because once the radio goes in, it'll expand. And once it expands, um, it'll make everything tighter and you'll be fine. All right. So now I'm going to go get that radio. All right, guys. So next thing we're going to have to do is mount the mounting brackets. Um, our kit comes with screws. Do not use them. Um, our kit comes with screws. Uh, the screws are, they'll fit like a, the old Panasonic. They'll fit some Kenwoods. They'll fit uh, a lot of generic radios. But the problem is that Pioneer is the biggest, um, rate. they're the most popular radio. So um, the ones that they come with and Sony, they're different. So I always, always, always tell customers, use the screws that came with your radio. So now, as far as the mounting brackets, the way our mounting brackets work is, I actually got into an argument with a customer a couple days ago an argument he called up before we opened and i hadn't had my coffee yet and what happened was he said well your mounting kit is no good you know it won't hold the radio right and i'm like the radio weighs a pound what are you talking about so anyway we you know we agreed to disagree his words um so this mounts to here right and then the there's little clicks usually i start with five and seven one two three four five and seven from the back Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five. Anything we sell, we believe in. So when you talk badly about it, it kind of hurts my feelings. And I get a little defensive. What do you want me to do? So this goes here. So five and seven on this one's going to fall short. Um, let's try six and eight. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Yeah, six and eight looks like it'll work. So what you want to do is you want to be a hair, a hair below the edge of here, okay? Um, you don't want to be past it because if you're past it, in my experience, there's issues with the face when it opens up getting caught up. So you want to be just a hair below it. And I'm pine, whoopsie. I'm piney, I always use these two mounting holes. It's a little hard because I'm doing it for the camera. Uh, and for you guys, I'm probably going to use this as a general how to mount brackets video. Um, because I, I, you know, to me, this is very simple, but since I do it every day, um, what I find, you know, I always tell all my customers like, yeah, I can tear apart any car you bring to me, but you ask me to boil an egg and I'll probably get it wrong because this is what I do. So these screws, you're going to tighten them very tight. All right. So you want them to be. Use a little muscle. You want it to be as flush as possible because what happens when you push this in, this is going to rub against the cage. Okay. There you go. Now, that's how that goes. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to bore you and show it to you twice. Um, but you can see that this goes into here. So the way this does is that this lip sits on the cage. And then this right here is what locks it into place, okay? And on this radio specifically, since the radio cavity is so tight, it actually pushes the cage in a little bit, so it's extra tight, all right? All right, guys, so now that the brackets are on, um, what I'm going to do is just slide it in, all right? So some of you got... So the key to this is keeping the cage straight um, and also putting them tight. Because I know a lot of guys, hey, it doesn't fit. Got to get past that, Okay. Once it gets past the lip, so that was the screws hitting the lip, now it slides right in, okay? Now, the problem is that you have to learn how to put the cables where they go and get them out of the way. I'll show you that in a second. Now, I'm going to pop this out and, and, and show you how to take it out because I get complaints about that too. Now, for the first time ever, we're going to introduce the NFIG RMK7, A4B67. So, here's what happens. RMK8, it matches the dash. See that? Matches perfect. But we got to get it painted, so it costs us money. Now, the RMK7 we never sold because it doesn't match the dash. Okay? But these cars are getting older now. So what happens when they get older is that a lot of people go to car wash, $5 car washes. Well, are they even $5? $5 when I was in high school. I think they're more now. Um, so when I'm talking about the ones that... that, that on a machine. I don't, I can't use those because all my cars are lowered. Uh, anyway, so, um, 
this doesn't match. But if you go to the Flat Out Car Wash, they put armor on everything. So not armor, whatever, protectant. So what happens, a lot of the cars I come across, this is actually no longer the factory color, it's black. And also from fingerprint, you know, if you're eating McDonald's french fries every day at lunch and you're touching buttons, it's gonna be all black and greasy, all right? So in this car, obviously though, it hasn't. And also the uh, the black one is, is cheaper. So a lot of people won't care too much that it matches perfectly, they just want the kit. So that's why we decided to introduce the cheaper kit. Now we're gonna pop this in, okay? Boom, boom, and boom. Now, as far as look-wise, that's perfect, okay? All right, guys, so I decided to, you know, stop and, and get a good look so you can actually see how well it looks. So if you look at the dash, the dash kit matches perfect um, with the fresh of the dash. This is a perfect car because sometimes I'll get cars. This guy actually takes care of his car. He actually also owns an RS4, so this is his daily driver. But as you can see, the black one doesn't match, but if you can save some money, you know, you might want it. All right, guys, I'm going to go get some tools, and then uh, I'll show you how to remove the radio, and then once we, we're done showing you the removal of the radio, we'll come back and we'll show you how to install everything and how to tuck all the wires, because that's important. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you how to take out this radio. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because I got a lot of questions. People are like, how do you get the radio out? Um, this is a panel tool set. You don't really need this for this, but I just want to show it to you. It's a nice set to have. So this is a bone tool. It's meant to, to you know, to help you remove trim. Um, two poppers. Uh, this is a scraper but I actually use it as a wedge tool sometimes to put in. And uh, this is actually, this if you put it behind something and it pops up like that, okay? Now, um, what I'm gonna show you right now, oh, number two, uh, unlike the cheap tools you find on eBay and stuff, um, ours have reinforcement, so they, they flex a lot better. And number two, the, the plastic is a special plastic to, so it doesn't scratch up the dashboard. They're, you know, they're really, really nice. Like I said, for this, you don't need them. I just wanted to show them to you real quick. Um, I, I am going to use them, though, so I'm just going to grab a little bit here and then whoops, use that to go in there and then pop up and then pull. You can easily do that with your fingers. I just always, you know. All right, so next thing you're going to do is you're going to start the radio removal tools. I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as you put these in, sometimes it's a little tight, sometimes it pops right out. Um, this is why you guys have issues because this, this cage is universal. Um, it's made to work with the kit, but the problem is that the opening in the car is so tight that there's not a lot of wiggle room. Um, all right, so we're going to push that in. So you're going to want to go. Oh, it's having given issues. So sometimes if you can't get in there, what you want to do is you want to use the key, the radio removal key that came with the, with the, that we sold you. It's thin enough to gap it open because right now what's going on is that the tooth, or you could use a pick tool. Uh, let's use a pick tool real quick. So it's so tight. There you go. So you're gonna squeeze this in with the locking with this facing outward. All right, in here. Oops. One more time. If you get a side that gives you problems, take out the other side and start all over on that side. All right. So there we go. So that's in there. So right now, so this side is a problem. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the bone tool. Let's try to keep that open a little bit. All right, that's locked in right there actually. So it didn't pop, but it's locked in. So now I'm gonna do the other side. Um, the key go. There it goes. All right. Let's gate this open in here. Oops. Cause this is gonna slide without it. Uh, nope, this side too. So what happens is that it's so tight that you have to separate it from the. What do I do with the? There you go. You got to separate it to squeeze the key in. What happens a lot of times? It, it's right up against the edge. So what happens is that if you try to put it in and you don't separate the metal, so it's got to go. The key has to go between the copper and the metal, not between the radio and the copper, which is probably what people are doing. All right, this is why I thought it was important to show this. All right, so we got that. That one's a little off to the side, so we're gonna gape it here. Be very careful when you when you gape this thing. Last thing you wanna do, there you go, see it popped in. Last thing you wanna do is, uh, is crack the side of the radio. It flexes, also, if you live in the middle of the North Pole and it's cold, make sure the car is warm because plastic doesn't bend when it's cold, it cracks. So now that they're both locked in, you should be able to just pull out, do one side at a time. See that side, and then this side, and then this side, and then this side. 
All right, just wiggle it out. Have patience. Um, don't just pull, because what happens when you pull is that you're going to just release the keys, and then on the way out, you're going to jerk around, and you're going to scratch the face of a radio. Reason I know that is I've done. See, I'm holding this right here. I'm protecting the face of the radio from when that happens. Okay. Now at this point, don't grab the face like I'm doing it. All right, and then just put the copper and just wiggle it out. Yeah, it's a tight fit, but guess what? Think about it this way: if someone's stealing your radio, I just, I let's say this is free security for the radio. Okay. We didn't charge you for extra for that. <laughs> I'll be right back and we'll show you how to pop everything in real quick. All right guys, so now we're gonna do everything. Just plug it right in from start. Uh, Cause I know you guys, a lot, a lot of people have problems with this cause they don't know how to organize um, the taped off center channel speaker. All right, so we're gonna plug this in. All right. And then the first thing you're gonna do is get this big, well, first of all, you're gonna tune this and make sure everything's right. But then you're gonna get this thing out of the way. Okay. So what you do is that you tuck it to the right and down. So when this is gonna end up, it's gonna end up like uh, almost by the carpet. All right, so this goes here. And there's a nice little pocket for it to dive. So at this point, it's probably six inches below this line, okay? Just all the way, it's probably level with the ashtray. So that's that, all right? Now, the steering control lead, if you watch our old videos, we made it longer. Um, what happened was is that people used to tuck this box away and then um, it would unplug. So we made this much longer, so you don't have to worry about it. So now you can tuck that one away. Now you tuck this away. That just push it down. Uh, the harness behind the steering wheel control, behind the climate control, there's a little gap in between, and you can actually push it so far down where well, you don't even see it. Okay, so I'm between the gap now. So now I'm between here. So there's nothing there. Look. And these, our harnesses are made uh, this length on purpose because that way you can you can still have the radio hovering in front of you and push this all the way down. So you see? So people complain, why are these harnesses so long? Everything we do, we think about. So this harness is this long, so you can actually tuck it behind here and still have the radio plugged in so when you push everything in, there's nothing in your way. All right, so we're going to go back behind the radio. Now, um... You know what, let me uh, set up the camera for this and let's figure out what we're doing. Almost forgot to plug in the uh, AM FM antenna adapter. So now that we're back here, um, let's do antenna first. So the AM FM antenna is right here, okay? If it's this far out, you're not getting reception. You gotta make sure you push this thing all the way in so everything's covered. So I've been selling these products for about five years. So a lot of stuff I'm saying is because this is what the phone calls I get. So this video will pretty much handle most of the tech support unless there's something wrong. All right, so that goes in there. Um, this right here is where the factory harness goes. Sometimes it's a lot easier when you hold it this way. Let me just push it in real quick. There you go. Yeah, the problem that's my weekend. So, um, over here is your USB. You're going to run a USB. Um, a lot of times what we do in, in, in our installs is we break the USB under the, the armrest and we put a USB 3.0 extension in there. Um, this right here, you see, this, that's the aux in. Um, we're not wiring an aux in. If you, this is not used in Audis because there's no port for this. This right here is a microphone. So this tiny one, uh, we, like I said, we haven't run the microphone yet. We're just doing the video. We'll pop it out once we're done. This over here says WR. That's where your steering wheel control lead goes all right so we're gonna plug that in and before you push the radio and just make sure that's plugged in all the way okay now um is that it yeah i feel like i'm forgetting something because we didn't plug in the micro usb so it looks empty um all right so now we're gonna go in here i already told you how you have to tuck everything all right just make sure there's no wires in the bottom pinching also make sure that the mute wire and the vehicle speed sense have not come out of the rubber shielding because that can cause an issue too I've, I've had people tell me that the radio has no audio and what it is is that the mute wire got pinched um, Got caught on some so right now as I push this in I'm gonna hold in the steering wheel control and now I'm gonna Look down there and make sure there's nothing so pop your head down and look all right nice and easy And you pop this in all right, And do I have the key on me? Oh no, I don't have the key. Yes. 
I just like showing that it works because a lot of times people are saying, you see it working? Now, if you look over here, car's off, dashboard's off, you don't have to see that, but you see the air conditioning went off, right? So, see how it's all off? Now, watch, the keys, key is actually coming out, and as soon as you pop out the keys when it turns off. So, that's a RAP re re uh, retain accessory position, I think. So, what that is, is that the radio's on, but the rest of the car is off, so it doesn't kill your battery. Let me, uh, that's the whole install. Let me move the camera, and then I'll show you how the steering controls function real quick. All right, guys, so um, now we're going to show you the steering controls. I'm going to start on AM, FM, because um, AM, FM, and Sirius behave a little differently, all right? So the, the, the only difference is song up and down. So on this, on our harness, song up goes through your presets, all right? And then when you push it, it goes to the next song, okay? And then uh, volume up, volume down, and then when you push the volume button, it goes to ATT. ATT is attenuation, it's not mute. So if you're here, it just lowers the volume a lot. It doesn't completely mute it. Pioneer does not support mute through steering wheel controls. That's very important. I had a customer argue with me um, that his other Pioneer did it, and I called Pioneer. Pioneer said no. All right, so let's switch to CarPlay because that's obviously what everyone wants. Um, these, this radio is so cheap now. It's amazing. Um, so I'm going to hit play. Um, all right, so real quick, I'm going to call my cell phone. A little music. All right, so when a call comes in, this is the phone button. You tap it to pick up. Hello, hello. And you double press it to hang up, okay? Now we're gonna redial. Let's say you're jamming along to some reggae. You don't wanna talk to NFIC car stereo because you're all happy with your radio, you're calling back. Tap it twice and it rejects, all right? Now, this is what matters to everybody. If you hold it down, you can say things like Siri, find me the best hot dog in the area. Um, we're not done with the install, so the microphone's not connected. Um, so she turned off. But yeah, that's it. Uh, steering controls, you don't have, like I said, you don't have to program them. Um, you know, we just added voice dial, so if you guys are watching this, uh, voice dial officially was released January of 2018. If you ordered this before and you're like, hey, what the heck, uh, call us up. Um, you know, we'll, we, we'll, we can sell you the box for a cheaper price if you want to upgrade. Um, but yeah, that's it. So just a little history on us. Uh, we're very familiar with A4s. Uh, what happened is one of my employees at one point had this exact same car. So we learned it inside out. So uh, we did, I, we probably have 50 videos on A4s uh, from 2002 to 2009, I guess, if you're talking about the convertible, um, on YouTube. Then we also have videos, like a hundred of them on my laptop. So at this point, we've sold so many products for A4s that there's really not a question um, that I can't answer. I'm not gonna say I'm the best in the country when it comes to this car, but I'm definitely top 10, if not top five. Um, you know, it's just cause, it's not cause I'm that good. It's cause we've done so many of them that every stupid problem that you can have, we've come across. So um, anytime you buy products from us, it comes with lifetime tech support uh, from us. Um, and tech support is me or someone who's directly behind me, under me, it's not, you know, I, I don't hire, I try to keep my staff small so that way we get quality, because once you grow too big, um, then now, you know, I'm disconnected from the guy who's three people under me, but anyway, my name is Christian, um, right now, if you call, you get me for tech support, um, in the future, like I said, I'll probably have one, at least one or two other people, but uh, we sell, we install, we ship worldwide, if you're a shop, we also do wholesale accounts, like I said, lifetime warranty as long as you're... No, 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 sorry. Not lifetime warranty. One-year warranty, but lifetime tech support as long as you own the car. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. My name is Christian. If you liked the video, if you made it this far and you don't give me a like, you're just a mean person because um, this video ended up being pretty long. And, you know, um, tell me you watched the video. Tell me you liked the video. Um, we're actually turning into more of a YouTube-orientated company. Um... Because, you know, it's just everyone watches the videos now. So, sorry, I mean the ramble. My name is Christian and Fit Car Stereo. Thank you so much for watching.